living on a First Nation in Canada are ten times more likely to die in a housing fire than in any other community in our country. And this has everything to do with the lack of federal funding to First Nations when it comes to fire and emergency services. The Six Nations of the Grand River Territory is a vibrant and unique Haudenosaunee community located in the middle of Southern Ontario's Golden Horseshoe. One of many things that makes our First Nations community so unique is our large population. With a total population of approximately 26,000 registered members and a total of 12,271 living within the community, the Six Nations of the Grand River is the most populated First Nation in all of Canada. However, being the largest First Nations in Canada also means that we have the busiest First Nations fire service in Canada. Statistics provided by Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development Canada state that fire losses, deaths, injuries, and destruction of property in First Nations communities far exceed those in comparable off-reserve communities. Incidence of fire damage is 2.1 times greater, incidence of fire injury is 2.5 times greater, and the death rate by fire is 10.4 times greater. Comparing Six Nations to communities of similar size, these statistics are easily seen. In numerous feasibility studies which have been conducted, the Six Nations community has been compared to the communities of Wellington North and Elliott Lake. As you can see in these statistics, it's very plain to see. Wellington North receives $72 per person, Elliott Lake receives $74.81 per person, and Six Nations currently receives $25 per person. Most off-reserve communities in Canada are provided with legally mandated fire prevention and protection services based on standards established through complementary federal and provincial legislative frameworks. First Nations communities like Six Nations are the exclusive responsibility of the Government of Canada, but there is no legislative framework to mandate fire prevention and protection standards in these communities. Issue 1. Building Codes There is no legislative framework for the application of the National Building and Fire Code in First Nations communities. This is extremely dangerous as there is no applicable building or fire code standards that govern fire prevention and protection in First Nations. Issue 2. Fire Inspections and Investigations Currently there is no legislative framework for fire inspections. There is no requirement to conduct them or to enforce code violation. The same is true for fire investigations which are sporadically conducted in communities at the voluntary initiative of the responsible fire department. Issue 3. Federal Fire Marshal's Office Each province has a fire marshal and a commissioner's office. Since First Nations status fall under federal responsibility, there is no fire marshal responsible for fire safety and prevention within Canada's First Nations communities. Issue 4. Funding Currently, First Nations across Canada receive funding for fire protection service only. This means, if you or a family member were to collapse into cardiac arrest, we are not funded to respond. If you were in a car accident and became trapped in a car, we are not funded to respond. If the car caught fire with you trapped in it, we could respond and put the fire out, but we are not funded to rescue you from your car. The current antiquated funding for First Nations can be easily explained. If your First Nations has a population less than 2,000 people, you receive $20 per person. If your First Nation has a population greater than 2,000 people, you receive $25 per person. These are all the common fire protection issues that First Nations face. What has never been taken into consideration is the diversity of each First Nation. Just as every off-reserve municipality or city is unique, so are First Nations communities. What is needed in Six Nations for Fire Services is not necessarily what is needed in another First Nation. The needs of the Six Nations Fire Service are unique and can be directly correlated to our population size of approximately 13,000 people, our geographical size, which is 180 square kilometers, our housing, which is approximately 2,674 homes, our schools, we protect five schools and three private schools. Our business sector, approximately 300 businesses exist within the Six Nations community, as well as multiple plazas. Our recreation centers, two arenas, horse barns, sports fields, ball diamonds, gyms. Our industrial sector, approximately 20 large factories and buildings, including our water treatment plant. This isn't to mention our nursing home, our elders complex, youth and elders center, employment center, treatment centers, daycares, youth lodge, architecture firms, speedway, greenhouse, motels, laundromats, gas stations, banks, birthing center, pharmacy, community hall, public library, bingo, the list is endless. Another unique issue to Six Nations is our call volume. In 2014, Six Nations Fire responded to approximately 700 emergency calls for service which is twice that of any off-reserve community of comparable size. This is a direct result of the common fire protection issues found in many First Nations across Canada, but compounded by the unique size, circumstance, and situation of the Six Nations community. 
The Six Nations Fire Service faces unique challenges on a regular basis, but with the support of the Six Nations elected council, we have been able to effectively face those challenges. We are constantly pushed to our limits, but continue to provide emergency fire service to the Six Nations community to the best of our ability. Six Nations fire protection is severely underfunded due to the antiquated and broken funding formula. Inadequate funding leads to inadequate training, inadequate infrastructure, and extremely overworked personnel. These are the circumstances that we face on a daily basis, and the potential for incidents of serious injury or death is only a matter of time. Outsourcing Six Nations fire protection services to a neighboring municipality will only mean longer response times at a cost of nearly three times the cost to simply fund the Six Nations Fire Department at adequate levels. The whole situation is troubling. The most shameful part is that we're asking our volunteer firefighters to risk their lives to protect our community while compensating them with a small honorarium which is equivalent to that of which the staff at the bingo hall receive. Why are lives in First Nations worth so much less than the lives of those who live off reserve? 